The Cube at EMC World 2014 is brought to you by EMC, Redefine, VCE, innovating the world's first converged infrastructure solution for private cloud computing. Brocade, say goodbye to the status quo and hello to Brocade. Hey, welcome back everyone here live in Las Vegas for EMC World 2014. This is theCUBE, this is our flagship program. We go out to the events, extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconANGLE. Join my co-host, Dave Vellante, co-founder of Wikibon.org. And our next guest is Boaz Palgi, VP and GM of EMC's Advanced Software Division, formerly the CEO and co-founder of Scale.io. Welcome to theCUBE. Thank you. So, you're working on stuff, a category, and all of a sudden, it's exploded, it's the hottest thing. As Jeremy Burton says, you can't ignore fashion. Uh, he learned that trick from Larry Ellison. The stuff that you guys have been working on might not have been fashionable, all of a sudden now it's in fashion. It's like a, a new suit that everyone wants to wear. So how do you feel about that? It's a, it's a great feeling to start something from scratch where people tell you it's impossible, it's never going to work, and then within a few years, uh, it's suddenly an industry category that uh, analysts are following, customers are buying into. Uh, it's a fantastic feeling. And um, right now, the Viper is getting a lot of traction. So tell the folks out there where you guys fit the Scale I/O piece, because I just asked the question to Sal. You know, where does Scale I/O, vSAN, and Viper? How does it all fit in? People want to kind of know the differences of what you guys fit into where. Okay, so so Viper is a Viper controller is a management and a provisioning a tool that it makes it possible to manage heterogeneous uh, storage environments in the data center. Um, and Viper allows you to manage both the uh, what we call the platform two traditional storage arrays, um, as well as the software uh, only uh, storage systems like Scale.io, Viper Object, uh, et cetera. And the beauty of Viper Controller is that it enables customers to start by uh, facilitating the operations and the management of their heterogeneous data center today, and then to continue to use that same management uh, platform and to bridge into the third platform type of software uh, defined storage. Now, Scale.io is a scale out software only block storage solution that runs alongside applications, databases, or hypervisors on the actual application uh, servers. So Scalio is a service and software solution. So, so, so ahead, boys, let me, let me ask you, so about five years ago, Brian Gallagher invited me to come speak to his, um, his Woods meeting, you know, his offsite planning meeting, and, and, I, and I said, I just want to talk to you about one thing which we think is going to be a, a really disruptive trend. And of course, we're talking to the high-end group. And so we laid out, we said, we made a premise. We said that, that for 15, 20 years, functions have been moving away from the, the server, out to the SAN, and, and for good reason. Yes. And now we see it moving back. And we see Flash as this big disruption, and it doesn't have to be Flash, but, but that's you know, one piece of it. Moving things closer to the server, and this distributed set of you know, coherent nodes, somehow interconnected, and I got a lot of heat. You know, you can imagine, five, six, seven years ago, right? Yeah. How are you going to do this? How are you going to you know, make it coherent? How are you going to communicate? What's the fabric? And you're going to use all this stuff. Yeah. Um, and I said, I don't know. I don't know how to solve it. I'm yeah. not a technical guy. That's your problem, right? right. You did that. So yes. take us back to when you started the company. Yes. When was that? Um, so, so, so we started to uh, work on Scale.io in uh, 2010. Okay. And what we saw at that time was uh, that the traditional way that we are used to uh, build data center architectures with three layers, servers, fabric, and storage, started to not make sense anymore. The, the, this type of architecture was actually a workaround 20 years ago when the application servers had hardly sufficient resources to run the application that they needed to run. So there was not enough resources in the server to also run some storage management software that would take care of resilience and advanced functionality, et cetera. Yeah, right. So, what so people get it did, out of there. Yeah, so yeah. what people did, they took other servers, filled them with storage, with disks, and ran a dedicated storage system, software on it, which was the front runner of today's SAN 
uh, right. sand market, the yep. 50 billion dollar market that we have today. Now, in the last few years, servers have more than enough resources, CPU, memory, uh, bandwidth, local capacity, and uh, you can run multiple applications and databases. Even and still, virtualized. Even virtualized, and still have enough resources to, to run the software layer there. And so, if you can do that, then it doesn't make a lot of sense to, to spend all the, all the operations and all the capex on, on additional layers. So this was our original premise when we started uh, Scale.io. Obviously, to do this, you need to take care of a few little things, uh, high availability and resilience, high performance, and all the enterprise class uh, capabilities of, uh, that people got used to with the enterprise storage systems in your software layer that runs on the application servers. And okay. so this is what we And did. so the, 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 the other basic concept here is to take uh, the, the storage that's within the server and pool it. Correct, right? yes. And then, so how do you communicate? That was the big question I got five years ago, six years. How are you going to communicate across those nodes and how are you going to move things fast enough so there can be coherent? Where's the single point of control? How, so how do you do that? So, so, so the architecture of Scala is a distributed parallel architecture where what we do is we stripe the data over a large number of devices and a large number of nodes. And then we aggregate both the capacity and the performance of the local, uh, of the various nodes, and we present it back as a virtual SAN to the applications uh, in, the, in the environment. Okay, so when you think about the markets for this, and we sort of laid this out, we have actually a piece on Wikibon uh, it's just if you, if you Google server sand and Wikibon, you'll, uh, you'll see this, but we laid out sort of the, the, the marketplace. You've got traditional arrays, you've got cloud storage, you've got DAS, flash only arrays, PCI server, fl flash, you've got hyperscale. Um, and so yes. we asked the question, where over time will server sand fit? Yes. And there's not a lot of white space where you don't fit. I wonder if you could talk about that. Was that your vision that you can essentially your total available market is the entire storage market. Yes, th this was absolutely our vision and we are executing on that vision today. So the way that we build Scale.io, Scale.io is the most scalable uh, solution in the market today. So we can scale from three to thousands of servers in a fully elastic manner and we do not force the customer into any type of hardware lock-in or into any type of configuration lock-in. So the customer can run Scale.io on any server hardware and server configuration in terms of CPU, memory, network bandwidth, um, type of disk, size of disk, number of disks in the server, etc. cetera. And um, we also don't force the customer even into any symmetric node. So he can have different types of servers in his data center and still aggregate all of that with Scale.io into a single uh, storage pool. And so this, and, and by doing this, we actually enable customers to build, for example, a magnetic disk-based, very large capacity uh, environments, or very high performance, PCIe-based, flash-based, uh, uh, low latency type of environments, and, and everything in between. Right, so cheap and deep or active, active data. What do you make of open source? Um, uh, and some of the movements in open source. Things like Ceph, for example, you see you know, Red Hat just got into the game. What's your take on that? So first of all, open source is, is great, it's important. Um, we, we are not, uh, we didn't go down the route right of uh, open source because we believe that uh, storage systems uh, must be robust, commercially uh, uh, supported. Um, you so say you didn't go down the, uh, the road of open source in terms of making your product open source. Correct. Do you use open source in your development at all? No, we build no everything from okay. scratch. Great. Okay. So um, right. And so, um, Ceph is, is mainly an object-based uh, solution as we see it. Um, and it's probably a very good uh, solution. Okay, so, so, so your um, approach is to get to market faster, more robust, better service, that whole, whole model. Yes. Where do you see initial traction? We see traction in a few environments. First of all, we see a lot of traction with both uh, private cloud environments in the enterprise uh, and public cloud environments with the uh, service providers. We see a lot of traction with uh, uh, customers wanting converged uh, environments, whether it's uh, OLTP, uh, databases, 
uh, running in converged uh, um, architectures um, or uh, hypervisors and, and VDI that people want to run in converged uh, uh, environments, sometimes even in appliance type of uh, approaches. And so we see a lot of traction in all these type of uh, directions. So we say converged, you're talking about uh, convergence of, of compute, storage, and, and networking? Yes, absolutely. Okay, so you're playing, talk a little bit more about how you play in that converged infrastructure market. So, so Scale.io was built to be a very small footprint uh, solution so that it can run on the actual application servers alongside the applications, the databases, or the hypervisors. And by doing that, and by enabling the aggregation of local capacity inside the servers, we effectively enable customers to create hyper-convergence or to, we enable also partners to create hyper-converged appliances uh, that they are selling in the market space. So, you know, we've talked a lot on theCUBE about, uh, about enterprises trying to replicate uh, hyper-scale. Uh, yes. is, is that a trend that you guys see happening and, and what does that mean, bringing hyper-scale into the enterprise? So, so we see that mostly in cloud type of environments, whether it's private clouds or, or public clouds. So people want to create platforms um, that are uh, generic platforms enabling their users to get as many uh, resources, compute and storage resources as they need in a very, in a very easy uh, manner. And so um, when you go down that route, you want to just be able to add more and more servers that represent storage, compute, and, and network without having to take into consideration the traditional challenges of capacity planning, performance planning, etc. You want this to be just very, very elastic and simple. This is what Scalar en enables customers so, to do. So what's it like being part of this 60,000 person company? A big sh culture shock, or you sort of still get your own little development team in Israel? And no, we fairly autonomous, or what's that? What's that? What's it like? We we try to combine the the best of both worlds. <laughs> so we are we are uh, putting a lot of efforts on uh, remaining uh, uh, fast and agile with our development and with our sales and marketing approach from the scale AO perspective. Uh, but on the other end, we're doing a lot of efforts to integrate with uh, EMC products, uh, Vapor, Recover Point, and others, and to integrate obviously with the EMC organization. So we. Uh, our integration into EMC uh, in, in terms of organization, uh, finance, HR, etc., uh, was one of the fastest in EMC's uh, history. So w w give us a quick update on what's happening in Israel. It's a hotbed of innovation, has been for a while. It's kind of the, kind of the, the new emerging you know, mini Silicon Valley. W why is that and, and give us the update. <laughs> I, I don't know why that is. Uh, <laughs> a lot of smart but, uh, people, a lot of well-educated people, well, yeah, I guess. Obviously, but you, you, but, but you, there's you, something yeah. else there, right? It's this well, th I think there is a, is a, there is a combination of um, good engineers, uh, uh, financing, and a lot of uh, uh, um, people that uh, are entrepreneurial uh, and that want to uh, take their ideas and, and execute on them. Maybe and we're bring in the them military to together, or right? I mean, yes, you yeah, get a lot yeah. of that as yeah, well. You do. Absolutely, yes. Yeah. Excellent. Bowen, well, thanks for coming on the cube. Really appreciate it. Um, I want to ask you to share your thoughts to the folks out there. On you know, given as an entrepreneur, you've been an entrepreneur now. You're at the big company with all this change. Why is this point in time in our technology history so important? So I think we are uh, experiencing a big shift in approach to data centers, which is driven by, by a few things. It's driven by um, the understanding that actually, the understanding in enterprise environments that actually much larger uh, data centers that need much more SLAs and much more performance uh, in the web 2.0 are actually able to do that on completely commodity hardware. This realization makes uh, IT executives think twice about how they build their data centers uh, today. Uh, and I think there are other drivers uh, related to uh, the belief that convergence translates into easier operations and better manageability um, combined with a lot of uh, uh, pressure on doing more with less. And so I think this uh, combination of drivers in the market is um, uh, pushing this whole move from the traditional three-layer architecture to a new architecture that is scale-out, commodity-based, high-performance, uh, and a single layer. 
Thank you so much. Great insight. Great to get the tech athletes like yourself coming in. And uh, I know you worked hard. Congratulations on all your success. Great to have you on theCUBE. Uh, appreciate your thoughts. This is theCUBE. We're live in Las Vegas for EMC World 2014. This is theCUBE. We'll be right back with our next guest after this short break. Thank you.